He was born Demi James Sposa to Italian-American parents in Jersey City, New Jersey, in 1917. He was the youngest of three boys, and his father had always hoped he'd grow up to be a doctor. But as you can see, even from an early age, he was showing inclinations towards show business. When he graduated pre-med from St. Peter's College in 1938, he told his father he had decided he wanted to go into radio. With his parents' approval, Demi James Sposa was on his way. He went to work at a small radio station in Jersey where a young singer named Frank Sinatra was also working. And many years later, he and Frank talked about that on television and how Demi Sposa became Dennis James. I can't. I did a show called Name That Tune. And you could. And they asked me to sing. Right. I tell you, you know what flop sweat is. I got out there every day and I said, fellas, come on, I can't sing. Never could. That's when they changed the name of the show to Mame That Tune. <laughs> After he, they heard him singing Beautiful. the songs. Hey, you know, I tell a story. Mame That Tune. I tell a story about this guy and myself. Okay. He may not remember, but I remember it. Okay. We worked in Jersey. I worked for a guy named Paul Lesteo, if you remember. And Paul Lesteo called me down one day because my name was Demi James Sposer. And he says, change your name or you're fired. And I changed it fast to Dennis James. I said, what about Sinatra? He said, he's got talent. <laughs> right? But in fact, Dennis had his own special brand of talent, which was soon recognized by the number one radio station in New York, WNEW, where he was hired on as a disc jockey. Dennis took advantage of life in the Big Apple. He was a busy young man on radio, doing commercials, acting in soaps, studying at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts at Carnegie Hall. Now, about this time, Dennis's brother Lou was working with the famous television inventor, Dr. Alan B. Dumont, who was ready to try some experimental shows on television. Lou told Dr. Dumont that he had a kid brother working in radio who could do it all. And together, they created television's first game show, Cash and Carry, televised live from a makeshift set in the back of Wanamaker's department store on Madison Avenue. Dennis often joked that at that time, there were only 300 television sets in New York, and half of them didn't work. These privileged few got to watch the ever-smiling Dennis melt under the 140-degree heat which the early Klieg lights produced. The year was 1941, and the public was just becoming aware of this new medium called television. However, our country plunged into war, and Dennis joined the Army. His show business career was put on hold. Well, almost. He was assigned to special services. He wrote and directed shows to entertain the troops. And as you can see, army life was tough. As a matter of fact, this period in the army was the only time in his 59 year career that Dennis was not hosting a television show or acting as the commercial spokesman for a company. When the war ended, he returned to New York where television was going by leaps and bounds. Dennis's popularity grew right along with it. Soon, Dennis was doing 13 live television shows a week. The very first network audience participation show was Dennis's OK Mother that went on the air in 1947. It spawned his familiar tagline, OK, OK, a phrase he used to close many of the thousands of shows and commercials he did over the next five decades. Dennis had about 25 television firsts, among those the first to host the televised New York Easter Parade, the first to do a television commercial, and the first to appear on videotape. He met artist Mickey Crawford in 1950. For Dennis, he always said it really was love at first sight. Honestly, do you blame him? They were married in 1951. As a sportscaster, Dennis was doing boxing and wrestling matches for which he won an Emmy. Wrestling was extremely popular in those days and often the wrestlers liked to throw each other at Dennis. Occasionally, the wrestlers like to throw Dennis at one another. A quick study, Mickey learned to jump under the ring to keep from getting hit. During his lifetime, Dennis appeared on more television shows than we could possibly mention here. He did his share of acting, too, in shows like Craft Theater, 
77 Sunset Strip. He performed in Summer Stock and Dinner Theater and did many cameos in films such as Rocky III with Sylvester Stallone. He was the spokesman for Old Gold Cigarettes for nine years. Remember Dennis and the famous dancing packs? And here for the makers of Old Gold Cigarettes is Dennis James. And before becoming a star, Grace Kelly played a cigarette girl in some of Dennis's commercials. His sponsors had such faith in his selling ability, they allowed him to ad-lib many of their spots, and the results could be pretty funny. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a winner at home, do we? Nobody picked Gloria Van Dorp, so unfortunately no winner at home. Our sponsor next week uh, will be the makers of L'Enterique products, and if you missed the show last week, then you missed all our talk about Tweed Mist. Now, Tweed Mist is a special toilet water concentrate that's lighter than perfume, uh, stronger and more lasting than bouquet. And it comes in a very beautiful bottle with a nice golden top and a crystal bottle, and your finger controls everything. Just a touch of your finger and a pressurized spray, and I'm telling you, you're living on top of a cloud. You are living. I spray it all around the house, on doorknobs, on the drapes, every place, all over the stagehands and the technicians. We have the finest smelling show in television today. <laughs> and if you want to smell right, then I say get Tweed Mist. You can't waste any. See, just a finger touch is all you need. The right exact amount comes out. Now, this is the newest member of the Tweed family, and I'd like you to try it tomorrow. $2.25 plus tax for Tweed Mist, right? Go to your drug and department store, squirt it in the guy's face, smell him, and if you like it, buy it. <laughs> Good night. See you all next week. Bye. And if Dennis sold a product on television, you can bet he used it at home. As the Kellogg spokesman for 12 years, there was no shortage of cereal in the James household. Hi, I'm Dennis James. You know, we've got a fellow staying at our house, and you would not believe it. He has never eaten Kellogg's Corn Flakes, never in his life. Here's the most popular cereal in the whole world today, and this guy has never even given it a try. Is it crisp? Is it fresh? Is it good tasting nourishing? He doesn't know. What's more, he doesn't care. But I'll tell you this, you never saw a healthier guy in your life. Let me show you his picture. There he is, Bradley James, one year old. I make you a promise, we'll turn him into a cornflake real soon, because if I can convince him, here's a man who can, his big brother Randy. Now, he knows what brings the best to you each morning. Well, how about your family? He was the spokesman for Physicians Mutual Insurance Company for 28 years, mail. including this year. This, no that must be a record in television history. You are merely calling for information. So get the security and peace of mind you deserve. Call right now, okay? Okay. We're here when you need us, Physicians Mutual. In 1961, I asked Dennis to be a panelist on a show I own called First Impressions. And since we were producing it in Los Angeles, we moved our families from New York to the West Coast, where Dennis and I quickly became close friends, as you can see. All right. Okay, that's enough. One reason we became such good friends was that charity was an important part of Dennis's life, as it is mine. There are so many worthwhile causes and oh, so many benefits. He would pass on some of them to me and I'd pass on some of them to him. In Los Angeles, the many television shows continued. Shows like People Will Talk, PDQ, Your All-American College Show, The Daytime Name That Tune, and The Nighttime Price is Right. His involvement with charity events continued as well. Dennis had a unique way of always being himself. He was as comfortable with presidents as he was with game show contestants. What you saw was what you got.
In 1988, he celebrated his 50th year in show business, and on the 50th anniversary of his college graduation, he finally became the doctor his parents originally hoped he would be. St. Peter's College gave him an honorary doctorate. Pop Spoza would have been proud. His awards and honors are many, but two that stand out are his induction on the Walk of Stars here in Palm Springs and the placement of his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. One of Dennis's favorite pastimes was playing in charity golf tournaments around the country. I think he really loved the game because it allowed him to spend quality time with pals like Jimmy Stewart, Phil Harris, Fred McMurray, and Buddy Rogers. And speaking of Buddy, he and his beautiful wife Beverly have been close friends and generous supporters of Mickey and Dennis's charities for many years as they are tonight. Dennis had his own charity tournament in the San Diego area for 12 years. And last December, he hosted the first annual tournament for cerebral palsy right here in the desert. The second one as a memorial to him will be played this December 8th. Dennis's dedication to UCP started in 1950 when he met Leonard Goldenson, president of ABC, and Jack Hausman, a prominent New York businessman, and Jack's wife, Ethel. They asked Dennis to MC a telethon which was a brand new concept in fundraising. Well, the first New York Telethon was very successful and became a big event each year. The biggest stars from stage and screen would make appearances. Bob Hope was named the Lifetime National Chairman. The more Dennis learned about cerebral palsy, the more involved he became. He intertwined his busy television schedule with 20-hour telethons held monthly in cities all across the United States. In 1965, in recognition of his contribution to United Cerebral Palsy and other charities, former President Eisenhower presented Dennis with the Humanitarian of the Year Award. Through the years, Dennis has had some wonderful co-hosts on his telethons, people like Jane Pickens, Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet, Paul Anka, and Donald O'Connor. Mickey and their sons Dennis Jr., Randy, and Brad pitched in when needed, with Brad serving as a co-host for the past two years. About 12 years ago, the lovely and talented Florence Henderson joined him, and she's been there every year since. Through the years, tremendous strides have been made in research and rehabilitation to help people with cerebral palsy. And over $600 million has been raised. January 1997 marked the 47th year Dennis emceed the telephone. Because it is an injury to the brain which can happen at any time in one's life, cerebral palsy will always exist. But soon, the hope is that no child will ever be born with cerebral palsy. Dennis James was a tremendous part of making that happen. And that made him a very, very happy man. 